Okay, guys, with that all down, Kaylee, what do we got going on next? It is time for our Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Feel free and call in if you want to let your voice be heard on the show. The number is 951-268-4259. And our first question is about a Marvel and DC crossover. The cool black nerd here. Question. And actually, probably just a wild theory. Do you think Kevin Feige and James Gunn have a secret agreement that James Gunn goes over to D.C. and straightens up everything just for them to have a D.C. versus Marvel crossover event movie. It's been done in the comics, but I don't see why not. Love what you guys do. All right. First of all, Cool Black Nerd has to record himself reading a book and have somebody playing sax in the background. Dude, he's the Barry White of Cool yeah. Black Nerd. I don't care about this question at all anymore. Dude, like, do you want to do voiceover? What's your deal? You sound awesome. Um. Okay, so... Since the world got wow. rocked with the news that we were getting James Gunn, Peter Safran, now going to be the CEOs and chairman of DC, the brand new DC studios, there have been so many people asking the question, does this mean we are now getting a Marvel and DC crossover? And look, I again get it. This is like Game of Thrones kind of stuff where two great houses will marry their kids off. It's like, okay, let's put uh, our little one here, James Gunn. He will go and be the head of DC now. And and the families are, you know, unified and all that kind of stuff. I, I get it. I, I get the idea of it. And there have been a lot of people who have wanted to see DC and Marvel mix up and cross over for a while. And he's right. there. It has happened in the comics actually a couple of times. Yeah. Now, one of the, the big major ones we've talked about on the show before, they DC and Marvel once did this event where they crossed it over, where there was some, you know, godlike being who decided that only one of the two universes could could exist, the DC one or the, or the Marvel one. And they picked champions to have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one fights. So they had, I believe it was Robin versus Jubilee. It was Batman versus Captain America. Wolverine versus Lobo. Superman versus Hulk, Storm versus Wonder Woman. And I'm trying to remember what the other ones were. There, there were a few others. Anyway, and then, you know, what would happen is the readers would write in and vote for who would win each individual fight. And then whichever universe's champions won the most fights, the other universe would be eliminated. But of course, you know, they didn't eliminate the other universe and all that kind of stuff. So could they bring something like that to the big screen for Marvel and DC? I really don't think so. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I said this before on the show because somebody wrote in in a live chat and asked this, and, and I'll, I'll say what I said then. That movie would be an unmitigated mess because number one, you've got far too many characters. So you're going to get a bunch of fans on both sides that is going to be really pissed off and really unsatisfied with the fact that their favorite characters didn't get any or very little screen time, right? Plus... Both sides are going to make unbelievable compromises. Because, and it will be, forget the writing the script process. Then you've got three years of legal from both sides going through. No, 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 no. That scene you're writing there makes our Batman character not look cool enough. No, 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 no. Your little scene here doesn't make Magneto look powerful enough. Or it's going to be all that. Plus, then at the end of the day, you got to ask yourself the question. Why would you make this movie? Like, if you're Marvel... Why on earth would you do a crossover movie with DC? What do you have to gain from it? Because right now, like, we're going to talk about Marvel versus DC again a little bit later in the show. But in the, the race, if you want to call it, it's not a competition, but still, in the race, if you want to use that terminology, Marvel is way ahead right now. And so what benefit is it to you to do that with DC? I could see some benefit for DC doing that as well. Um doing a, maybe doing a crossover, but I, I just don't see logistically how it would work from a quality standpoint as a fan. I don't see how this works. Um, from if you're Marvel, why on earth would you do it? You got nothing to gain by doing it. You'll make more money as Marvel Studios. Just, you know, we could spend a lot of time and resources and character work making that movie with DC, or we could just make another Deadpool movie and make a lot more money because it would all be their money. They wouldn't have the, the headaches and the nightmares of going through all the stuff they have to do to compromise the DC. 
I I just don't see how this would be even a good movie. I don't know, Chris. This is something that all of us, you know, fan citizens have thought about a lot. But do you think that with James Gunn there now, do you think that the secret plan is actually for Marvel and DC to make a big crossover event movie? Guys, we want to take a second and thank a sponsor of today's episode, True Classic. This brand new sponsor has the absolute best fitting t-shirts that a man can buy. Finding the right t-shirt with a little bit of a dad bod is incredibly frustrating. Most t-shirts are either way too tight on your gut or look way too big and boxy. You're not in high school anymore and it's time to upgrade. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men finally get a better fit at an affordable price. And the John Campy Show viewers and listeners get access to the best deal they offer. For a limited time only, get 25% off using the code CAMPIA at trueclassic.com. Look, you and I both know that almost all of men's t-shirts are designed to look good on skinny models with six packs. But let's be honest, that's not most of us. True Classic tees taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter around the chest and shoulders. It's time to highlight your best attributes with a t-shirt that you can always confidently throw on. Like most of you guys, ever since college, I have always struggled to find proper fitting t-shirts that are comfortable. Well, True Classic from the moment I put on the shirt they sent me solves it. And True Classic doesn't just stop at tees. From polos and workout shirts with the same flattering fit. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with the promo code CAMPIA. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day refund policy. Stay classy with True Classic. Your dad bod will thank you. I mean, the nerd sphere certainly does. I mean, the last few days, it's constantly been these mashups and referring to the amalgam universe, right? Um, I mean, CBR was like, we're so much closer now because of this. But the issues you're talking about, too, it was, I believe, a four issue special event series in 1996. And sure, we've had some other mashups and everything since then. But I don't know if I like that for a film. I like that for comics. I love that for video games. I don't know if I want a feature film featuring all these different characters because it was already such a, a major win that we were able to balance so many heroes and villains throughout, you know, Endgame and Infinity War and everything like that. I'm wondering about how much screen time everyone will actually get that's quality here. I feel like it'd just be a kind of big quantity push of here's all your favorite superheroes and that's it. I still want some substance there, you know, even though it will be fun to go, oh, Superman and Spider-Man, that's neat. I still want some really great storytelling behind it and I don't know if we can achieve that. Rob, what do you think? Is this something you think they should do? Like you're you're in James Gunn's office and consulting him. You are his consigliere now. And uh, they say, hey, the, you know, talk about maybe us doing a Marvel crossover with DC. Should we do it, Rob? What do you say? Well, here's the thing. Like we just saw we just saw uh, the Spider-Man versus Superman. That was the, the Treasury edition that was big when I was a kid in the 70s. They did X-Men and Teen Titans, which was actually quite good. The story was quite good, and that was one of the first, that was in the early 80s when X-Men and Teen Titans were both the biggest titles of each company at the time. There was the mythical JLA uh, Avengers comic that was George Perez was drawing for years. I think Rob Liefeld had bought the only pages that existed. For years, people talked about this JLA Avengers crossover. Never happened, and then it was liberated, and it was also quite good. I think, like you said, though, the the enormous production difficulties, legal di difficulties, and how do you pay people? I think the only way you could make this work is it would have to be a 50-50 split and all the actors would have to work for favored nations, meaning all the actors get paid the same amount mm -hmm. of money. There's no, like if you want to bring back Robert Downey Jr., it would have to be the kind of thing where if the script wasn't fun, you, the only way to get these actors back is everyone gets paid the same amount of money. And it's not a lot of money because those fees would make the film cost prohibitive. You could never do it. But I do think if anybody could do it, if anybody could do it, James Gunn, because he's been a comic book fan his whole life, and Kevin Feige, they know these comics. And the first place that I would look, it's got to be JLA versus Avengers. That's what you got to do. You've got a comic that's pretty good. So there's your roadmap. It could be done, but I don't think that there is a, I don't think this is the grand plan that Kevin Feige and James Gunn have come up with. I don't believe that. Um, but I do believe that our viewer, Cool Black Nerd, could probably talk both sides into making this movie, <laughs> yeah. uh, just but hearing me, his voice. Let me, look, like, you brought up some images there, Jonathan. Like, what about the notion, though? Because when people hear DC thing, we think Avengers versus JLA, 
or uh, some some massive MCU versus DCU thing, right? But what about something like what Jonathan had up on the screen? What about solo crossover? What about Spider-Man, Batman? What about Batman, Punisher? What about like in in both? Both the DCU and the MCU, they are now both fully embracing, I think it's idiotic, but they're both fully embracing multiverse now, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, Batman is sitting in the Batcave, you know, Martha, Martha, Martha. And then like this big portal opens up and he goes, oh, and he's sucked through this portal, oh. a la Peter Parker oh, in um, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I love that Martha, Martha, Martha is like his like his Bloody working. Mary cry. <laughs> yeah, oh Martha. man. I thought that was more like his work, work, work. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 Martha, Martha. And so a portal opens up and he's sucked through. It's like, where am I? Who's that guy in a spider suit? Should we be friends? Okay, first we'll fight and then we'll be friends. I don't know. I mean, but what about the idea of something smaller like that? Like instead of universe versus universe, one character, one character. It takes away the narrative issue that I have of making sure all the characters have their due time. But I still don't love it. I, I, I don't know, especially just in that particular example. And I know you're just giving examples for the sake of them. But is Bruce out there making friends? I think he'd see Sp- Spider-Man and be like, what the fuck are you? I don't want to deal with you. You're a child. You're a <laughs> yeah, child yeah, in a onesie. Probably. Get out of my way. <laughs> probably. Um, but but could it, I get, listen, I don't think they're going to do this either. Mm-hmm. But I mean, could it be more feasible? Because you're talking about the sheer logistics of it, the sheer money yeah. of it. Yeah. But what if it was a smaller scale? I, 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 that would be much easier to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think from a legal perspective, this, both companies would have to agree to split it all down the middle 50 50 first of all they'd have to, cost every, and and everything everything, profits. everything okay. would be and and all the and actors if you're marvel would you agree to that because you're bringing more to the table than dc do you know what though here's the thing we all think that there's some kind of rivalry everybody's doing their own thing this would have to be like uh, it would have to be some kind of a celebration th- like i don't know so like james and and kevin doing a video together on youtube saying listen this is not to be taken seriously. This is not to be taken as this is going to change the MCU or the DCU, but we're going to celebrate together fandom of these characters we love, and we're going to make this big, one isolated, big yeah. crossover movie. Well, because, you know, I remember reading back in the early 80s, reading X-Men versus Teen Titans, and it worked. I mean, Dark Phoenix and I think it's Dark Phoenix and Dark Side were the villains, and it actually worked. Like, they didn't, it, and you under, everyone who read it understood it was kind of ridiculous, but it worked within the context of that comic, and I liked it. It didn't. It didn't denigrate either side. It didn't. So if they came out and said this, and and it's just a celebration of, you know, next year's Warner Brothers 100th anniversary, and you came out and said this is an anniversary film, and Disney, Disney's 100th anniversary, it might also be next next year. It's either this year, next year, or the year after. So celebrating the 100th anniversary of both studios. I mean, it's too soon to do something like that because I'll never be able to put it together. But for that reason alone, we're going to do like what we did with the comics. It's a one-off. It's to celebrate a century of great characters. Well, guys, question is for you. What do you think? I don't think this will happen. I just think there's way too many things working against it. And the big question is even why bother doing it. But I mean, with James Gunn there, it does make it more feasible. And maybe you could do something smaller scale. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Whatever you think, jump on down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.